Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to MOOC NPTEL course on Bioengineering, an interface with Biology and Medicine. In the last couple of lectures, we have started studying about amino acids and proteins and how studying the complex protein mixtures in totality comes under the field of proteomics. There are different tools and techniques which are being employed to study the proteins and we started discussing about the electrophoretic techniques in the last lecture. We talked about uh, various type of you know, protein separation technologies, especially SDS page and two dimensional electrophoresis. We have seen that you know, two dimensional electrophoresis is very elegant technology which can separate proteins based on uh, its isoelectric point and molecular weight. And very simple for any uh, laboratory to perform these kind of experiments. However, when uh, it comes to the large number of samples to be analyzed and especially the clinical sample uh, kind of analysis. Uh, it, it start posing some challenges and one of the major challenges is gel to gel variation. For many uh, time there are issues of data analysis and there can be some user bias in data analysis because the gels has to be cropped, it has to be matched, two gels cannot be exactly same. So, there, there could be some bias of analysis, how you are defining the you know spot boundaries in the analysis process can be subjective. There are other systemic variations as well in this technology and of course, there you have to handle the inherent biological variations of individuals or biological samples. Uh, so, then you know, considering these facts that you know on one hand we have biological uh, variations, then if even technology has some variability, then it becomes very difficult to draw conclusions from you know in quantitative manner. So, if intention is to do quantitative proteomics, when you want to compare every protein from the healthy individual to disease individual or control and the test conditions, then you have to look for some better alternative approaches. And that is where a technique uh, dye or difference in gel electrophoresis uh, has come forward and started playing an important role in area of gel based quantitative proteomics. So, in dye technology uh, different protein samples are labeled with different cyanine dyes, they are then mixed together and then run again like a 2D gel. So, you are in some way utilizing the 2D gel properties, but to avoid the variability of this one to other sample you are labeling them with some uh, dyes which are cyanine dyes. So, what are cyanine dyes? These are derivatives of n hydroxy succinamide which covalently binds the epsilon amino group of proteins on the lysine residues. They are respectively resolved, they fluoresce at distinct wavelength and therefore, even when you run the samples on one gel which are labeled with different side dyes, you can scan them on different wavelengths. So, the labeled samples can be uh, mixed on run on one single gel and you can now eliminate the major problem of gel to gel variability by employing the uh, cyanine dyes based dyes technology. So, let us uh, look at the overview of difference in gel electrophoresis. Uh, imagine your control sample is labeled with one of the psi dyes which is psi 3 dye and your uh, treated sample is labeled with uh, psi 5 dye. And like that you have you know 10 healthy individuals and 10 of the disease individual. So, you can label them separately with psi 3 and psi 5 dyes, but additionally because you are going to you know run on one gel uh, one healthy and one of the disease individual samples you are going to separate them on one gel. So, like that you have to run 10 gels. So, if you want to cross compare these 10 gels or for that matter the you know protein profiles of different patients, then you need to have some sort of you know the common parameter to be analyzed and that is internal standard. So, you can take the small amount of protein equal amount of protein from all of these uh, you know healthy individuals and disease individuals which we are talking in this context and then you can uh, mix them together to make a pool and that pool could be labeled with a third dye which is psi 2 dye. So, now you uh, for the gel 1 you have a, you know uh, let us say healthy 1 H 1 and then you have the diseased 1 D 1 plus you have internal standard. For the gel 2 you have H 2 and you have D 2 plus again internal standard and like that you can have 
H n to you know d n and plus internal standard. So, each gel will have internal standard and it will have one set of healthy and diseased uh, individual uh, proteins. You are mixing them together. So, let us say H 1 plus D 1 plus internal standard those three you have mixed together and now made a pool in a tube and from there onwards the process becomes exactly similar like what you have done in 2D electrophoresis. So, now you can rehydrate this protein which is having all the three type of samples your healthy individuals, disease individual and the pool internal standard and then it has all you know, those dyes which from which you have labeled the proteins. Now, you are doing the rehydration, you are doing isoelectric focusing and then subsequently you are doing SDSPH or second dimension separation. Once you have done that, then now you can scan this one gel which has you know both healthy and disease individual profile, those two you can now uh, separate on the single gel and you can scan them on different wavelength and, and now you can obtain different patterns of psi 2, psi 3 and psi 5 images which could be utilized for further quantitative analysis. So, when you are aiming to do the labeling of the proteins, there are two broad strategies that people have used, one is the minimum labeling and other is saturation labeling. In minimum labeling, the epsilon amino group of the lysine is targeted for labeling. These psi dyes, especially psi 3 and psi 5, these are charge and size matched and there are no multiple labels which is required for you know this kind of technology. It can label 3 percent of all the proteins. So, therefore, this is one of the very robust uh, way of doing the protein labeling using dye uh, technology especially psi dyes. Alternatively, uh, one could also label uh, cysteines and that is known as saturation labeling. So, those are again the charge neutral size matched it can be used in a context of you know the proteins which are uh, having high propensity for the cysteine amino acids. So, as I mentioned in the as comparison uh, with the 2D electrophoresis, the dye technology is much superior for the quantitative purpose and that superiority comes uh, mainly because of the internal standard which is being used and that will be used in all the different you know uh, samples for analysis could be used for the normalization and co-detection purpose. So, internal standard is a reference point for every protein species which is present on each gel in the experiment and here it is shown that you know in which way you need to make the internal standard when you are planning for experimental design. Also, it is important for you to uh, not have any bias uh, when you are doing this kind of technologies, high throughput technologies, you need to make a robust plan and ensure that you know the uh, you do not have any bias. So, for example, every sample if you are labeling for healthy individuals with psi 3 dye and every disease individual with psi 5 dyes, there will be some bias. So, you need to do the dye swapping so that you can have few individuals of you know healthy population with psi 3 dye and few can be from psi 5 and vice versa for the disease population. But internal standard which is the pool internal standard actually provides lot of benefits in this technology uh, where every protein now in the present in any given population let us say the 10 healthy and 10 disease individual many of proteins will be unique in those each individual everything will be actually present on each gel as a part of the psi 2 dye when you are uh, you know getting the image obtained from the psi 2 dye. It also decreases the gel to gel variation because now you can use this uh, psi 2 image pattern from all the 10 gels to compare them one by one. Each sample can be now compared internally because of the same standard being used and this makes it much more robust and much more accurate for uh, to provide the statistics for the each spot. So, by employing this kind of you know the uh, some uh, changes for example, internal standard and use of the side dyes, the difference in the electrophoresis gel based technology has become much more accurate and become much more robust to provide the quantitative proteomic changes. So, here you know you can see that you know uh, the same gel uh, is now uh, is scanned at different wavelength and you can obtain the psi 3, psi 5 and psi 2 images from the same gel and now if you overlap them you can see these kind of beautiful uh, spots lighting up. This is one of the actual experimental gel obtained from uh, one of the uh, serum proteomics uh, project. Uh, so, now you can see there are some spots which are shown shown in the red color, few spots are coming in the green color, but most of the spots are yellow in color. When it is yellow in color, it means there is no change in the expression. When it is red in color, probably one of the condition either healthy or diseased is showing high expression of those proteins and the green means you know these proteins are highly upregulated in other conditions. So, just by looking at these spots, one could obtain multiple information on the 2D dye gels for example, their isoelectric point, their molecular weight as well as their you know expression values what kind of changes are happening. And of course, then you can go back 
and you know analyze the data in more detail and look at each spot wise what happens in the healthy individuals versus disease individual. And if you can see sometimes these kind of you know 3D uh, spot views which shows here that you know uh, some of the spots are shown quite you know uh, highly expressed in a disease condition. That, that looks pretty you know interesting because in many gels as you can see here in all the six gels this one particular protein is uh, highly upregulated in the three dimensional views when we visualize and that shows kind of you know in all the patients are expressing this proteins in very high uh, abundance. And now this is something which is an interesting protein for you to identify and take it forward for your research purpose. So, uh, DICE technology uh, what kind of advantages it provides? Uh, you are avoiding the source variations, you are avoiding gel to gel variations because now you are adding the internal standards, you are uh, adding very sensitive cyanine dyes uh, and by you know doing the dye swapping you can actually eliminate those you know biases of the uh, comparison. So, by using these uh, standard internal standards and uh, the dye swapping method now you can achieve very high reproducibility and you can achieve high degree of automation and you can use the co-detection process to ensure that now your gels are analyzed properly without any bias. So, in the conventional technologies there is you know as I said it can be user bias uh, may have in the traditional 2D electrophoresis whereas, in the dyes technology the uh, softwares are very robust and they use the Psi2 image for doing the normalization and therefore, it is you know much more robust method and there is no user interface involved to do any bias here. Uh, lot of you know variability which are part of the experiment of biological samples that of course, we cannot avoid which is biological variation, but our you know, technical variations and analysis based variations they have been quite a bit eliminated at the level of you know the DIH technology and the software which have been you know come forward to analyze this kind of data and <coughs> very robust statistics which can be utilized to now uh, identify these spots of interest which could be now taken forward with much higher confidence. So, again you know summing up on the DICE technology we can see the overview of the technology we have you know we are comparing a test and the control conditions, we have labeled the sample with Psi 3 Psi 5 dye, we have made internal standard which is now with the label with Psi 2 dye, mix all the three samples separate on one gel and now you can scan on different wavelength to obtain different color pattern of these dyes. Let me explain you this in more detail in the uh, following animation. Each protein sample as well as the internal standard is labeled with a differently fluorescing cyanin dye which allows all protein samples to be simultaneously run on a single gel. The dye binds covalently to the E a minor group of lysine residues in proteins. The labeled protein samples are mixed and run on a single 2 DE gel. Separation takes place on the basis of isoelectric points of the proteins in one dimension and based on molecular weight of the proteins in the second dimension with the smaller proteins migrating further along the gel. The gel containing all the protein samples can be viewed by illuminating it alternately with exciting wavelengths corresponding to the various cyanin dyes. View of a superimposed dyed gel depicting all protein spots of multiple samples information on molecular weight and PI of proteins can be obtained from these spots. It is possible to load either a single or multiple gel images simultaneously. This is done by means of the load option in the file menu. The saved gel images must be chosen, which are then displayed on the software. Several tools are available for analysis of the gels. It is possible to crop the gels 
by selecting a specific region that is to be studied and then selecting the crop gels function. Cropping gels helps in selection of regions with high spot density or in trimming of regions with high background staining but no spots. Specific selected regions of the gel can be zoomed into for viewing the spots more closely and for comparison of spots between two gels. This is particularly useful for gels having large number of spots. Specific selected regions of the gel can be zoomed into for viewing the spots more closely and for comparison of spots between two gels. This is particularly useful for gels having large number of spots. Overlaying of images is a particularly useful tool for comparison of two gels. The gels are overlaid such that they appear merged and spots that coincide will overlap with each other. This is extremely helpful while comparing clinical samples of control and treatment, providing clear indication of the proteins that are differentially expressed. The spots on the gels can be displayed as three-dimensional graphs. Either the entire gel can be chosen or a particular region can be selected for this representation. The peaks obtained in the graphical representation are directly related to the spot intensity. Every spot on the gel can be detected by selecting the Detect Spots option. Parameters such as smoothness, saliency and minimum area must be suitably adjusted for maximum clarity. Once this is done, each spot will either be encircled or marked with a cross, depending on the settings, along with the spot numbers. The software facilitates interpretation of the gel images by matching two different gel images obtained. The matching spots are marked and any variations in the spot position are indicated by blue lines in one of the gels. This provides an understanding about the reproducibility across gels. Information regarding the various physical parameters of each spot can be obtained via the spot table. This table provides the spot number, intensity, area and volume of spots as well as the saliency of spots. These parameters help in judging the quality of a gel. In addition to physical parameters, several statistical parameters can also be computed for each spot on the gel such as central tendency, mean, median, dispersion, coefficient of variation, standard deviation, etc. Scatter plots and histograms can also be plotted for clear data analysis. These provide information regarding intra and intergel variations. It is also possible to specifically compare a particular selected spot across gels. When the gel is run with molecular weight markers, the weight of unknown proteins can be estimated from these. It is also possible to estimate the PI of the proteins. 
these parameters in addition to other physical and statistical parameters can be obtained for each sport. It is also possible to specifically compare a particular selected sport across gels. When the gel is run with molecular weight markers, the weight of unknown proteins can be estimated from these. It is also possible to estimate the PI of the proteins. These parameters, in addition to other physical and statistical parameters, can be obtained for each sport. Software for difference in gel electrophoresis analysis varies with respect to certain features compared to normal 2DE analysis. It can compare three gels simultaneously, of which one is typically the pooled internal standard containing all spots. Any changes implemented in one gel, such as cropping, spot selection, etc., will be implemented across all three gels in DIGE. Other features and tools for DIGE analysis are same as those used for 2DE analysis. Physical and statistical parameters of all spots on the gels can be determined through their corresponding reports. Three-dimensional graphical representations provide information regarding intensity of spots on the gel. You know, summing up the entire gel-based proteomics which we started in the last lecture, uh, where we can see that you know the SDS page and 2D electrophoresis, they are very powerful technologies. Uh, however, when, you, when it comes for the differential proteomics or quantitative proteomics, 2D electrophoresis has certain limitation which has been actually quite a bit overcome by using the DICE technology which is another multiplexing uh, platform uh, which reduces a lot of intrinsic variability uh, which we have encountered in the 2D gel based workflow and uh, that is kind of a way forward to do gel based quantitative proteomics. Let us now move on to, to think about the protein purification because you know the uh, protein purification becomes very essential to study the structural and the functional uh, proteomic study and for all kind of functional annotation it is very crucial for you to you know uh, purify a given protein which you want to further understand. So, there are several chromatographic uh, purification uh, technologies uh, have been developed which aims to utilize you know some properties uh, of these proteins whether it is size, their shape, their charge or the chemical specificity and looking at those properties now these proteins could be separated in the chromatography. So, let us talk about what is chromatography. Chromatography broadly is a collection of lab techniques which carry out the separation of complex mixtures by making use of the inherent properties of the components of the mixture. It involves the differential partitioning of molecules between a suitable a stationary phase and mobile phase. The most commonly used chromatography techniques include the gel filtration technology, ion exchange chromatography, affinity chromatography etc. Let us briefly talk about each of these techniques in some detail. We start with gel filtration chromatography. So, in gel filtration chromatography the columns are composed of the porous beads which are made from polyacrylamide, dextrin or agarose. In this technology in the size exclusion chromatography proteins are separated according to their size. Now, the small molecules like salt they are retained longer in these uh, porous matrices or the beads and then larger protein molecules they will elute first. So, now looking at their size you can elute the, uh, the proteins which are the large in size first and then the small uh, proteins are retained they will travel longer in the beads and then eventually they will come out of these uh, columns. So, uh, looking at the size now you can separate proteins using gel filtration chromatography. Let us now talk about ion exchange chromatography. Here the proteins are separated based on what are the charge differences in the overall protein structure is. So, proteins with overall negative charges will interact with the positive charges or vice versa. So, accordingly you can select the uh, beads for example, carboxymethyl group or you can choose the diethyl aminoethyl DEA groups 
So, these kind of you know beats could be chosen uh, which now can, can use the properties of positive or negative charge of amino acids and use that to separate proteins in ion exchange chromatography. Now, in ion exchange chromatography the proteins are first adsorbed to the ion exchange column and then you know after they are bound with these beads now you want to uh, slowly desorb them by increasing the salt concentration. So, therefore, now the sodium and chloride ions they compete and then by altering the pH of the buffer uh, you can change the charge on the protein. So, therefore, you can elute the proteins based on their positive or negative charge. Let me explain you this in more detail in the uh, following animation. Charged stationary phase. The column stationary phase consists of a positively or negatively charged polymeric matrix which will bind molecules of the opposite charge. Commonly used ion exchanges include negatively charged cabozymethyl cellulose, CM cellulose which is a casein exchanger and positively charged diethyl minoethyl cellulose, DEAE cellulose which is an anion exchanger. Protein mixture. The unpurified protein mixture which consists of proteins of different net charges are loaded onto the column. The proteins having charges opposite to that of the stationary matrix will bind to it while the remaining proteins will be eluted from the column. Mobile phase. Following sample applications, the proteins are eluted out of the column by means of a suitable mobile phase that carries the protein out with it. For ion exchange chromatography, buffer systems of suitable pH are used which will remove the unbound proteins. The buffer is then changed such that the charge of the bound proteins is modified and they are also eluted out of the column. Effluent sample fractions. The solution leaving the column is collected in suitably sized fractions for further analysis. The unbound proteins having same charge as a column matrix will be eluted out in the initial fractions while the bound proteins will be eluted later upon changing the buffer system. The column is packed with a suitable casein or anion exchange resin depending upon the charge of the protein that needs to be bound to the column and purified. Here we represent purification of positively charged molecules using a casein exchanger. The casein co exchange column is then loaded with impure protein mixture consisting of various positively and negatively charged proteins. The column is eluted with a buffer solution of suitable pH such that the negatively charged molecules are removed from the column while positively charged molecules remain bound to the ion exchange resin. The buffer solution is then changed such that the net pH of the protein of interest is modified and it no longer binds the ion exchange resin. Therefore, the bound protein also gets eluted out of the column in this manner. Fractions of appropriate size must be collected and analyzed for their protein content. The negatively charged proteins which get eluted first will be present in the initial fractions while the positively charged proteins that bind to the column are eluted in the later fractions. The 
fractions are then analyzed for their protein content using UV visible spectrophotometer at 280 nanometers. A graph of element volume versus protein concentration is then plotted with each peak height being proportional to the concentration of protein. Then it comes the affinity chromatography uh, which is based on affinity of a protein to other molecules. It could be different substrates or products or cofactors, antibodies or metal. These matrix beads they are chemically coupled to the ligands and now the proteins are actually bound through some specific interactions. So, only the protein which you know the property which you want to utilize for protein separation only those proteins are going to get bound and rest of the proteins will not bind and they will get eluted out. So, proteins can be then de dissolved by excess ligand in the solution forms. Thinking about the DNA technologies and uh, the genetic engineering uh, method which we have you know discussed in the past, when you are doing the DNA cloning at that time you can introduce some histidine tag in the protein and let us say that property could be utilized for the affinity chromatography for the histidine tag based protein purification. So, now each protein which is formed from that gene will contain the histidine tagged uh, base protein. And now if you have a column which is having uh, nickel NTA beads or having nickel uh, uh, in the column, now it is going to bind with the histidine tagged with the coordination chemistry. And now only those proteins which are you know protein of your interest where you have added the histidine tag is only going to get bind to the affinity column. Then all rest of the proteins can be removed and they will all uh, be in the elute forms. So, now you are going to add uh, imidazole in the increasing salt concentration of 100 to 500 millimolar. Initially, you know some of the uh, weakly bound and non-specific proteins they will get eluted out and then as you increase the salt concentration only those protein which are tightly bound which is protein of your interest is going to get eluted out. So, here the uh, in the affinity chromatography your intention is to look for a specific interactions and look for high degree of protein purification. Uh, unlike the gel filtration technology, you are not limited with the overall sample volumes. Uh, you are not using very long columns here and, and usually you are able to achieve you know much higher purity. So, people use this particular type of technique uh, especially to look into the uh, higher pure protein purification especially if you want to characterize the proteins further. So, uh, in summary uh, in the last couple of lectures we have been discussing about you know various protein technologies. Uh, and today we essentially uh, looked into how the advancement of 2D electrophoresis has resulted into technology like you know different synge electrophoresis which could be utilized for the quantity proteomics based experiments. Then we talked about you know uh, it is so crucial to uh, purify the proteins and different type of chromatography techniques have been employed which looks into the properties like size, like their charge and their affinities to a different substrates and this could be utilized by different chromatography methods to purify these proteins which could be further used for uh, studying their protein structure and function. We will continue our some of the protein technologies in the next lecture and then uh, we will try to conclude how knowing the protein basics and these technologies can be so useful for various type of uh, ongoing research in the area of bioengineering. Thank you very much. So, the last lab demonstration session you have seen how 2D electrophoresis can be performed. Let us now see some of the minor changes which happens while performing difference in electrophoresis. So, let us start the laboratory demonstration session now for dyes where we will only show you the key steps which are different in performing dyes as compared to the 2D workflow and then rest of the workflow remains similar for 2D dyes based experiments. So, when we run a 2D gel, we normally run 2 to 3 gel, one represents a control gel, another is a disease gel or a different treated sample and then we compare the two different gels, which sometimes leads to some reproducibility issues because the same spot will not be present at the exact location in the two, three different gels. So, then we have an advanced technique which is dyes which overcomes these gel to gel reproducibility issues as we have to run only one as we have to run only one gel for two to three different samples 
so in case you have two samples one is your control and another is your treated sample you can mix them with side dyes you can pool them and that common pool you can run in on a one single dye gel so we have three different dyes side dyes side 2 so normally what we do suppose in case of two samples we have and we want to label 50 microgram of each with a dye so we'll take 50 microgram of a sample and then we'll add side 3 for example in one case the next sample we have a treated sample we'll again take 50 microgram of our sample and we'll add our psi 5 dye and then what we'll do is we'll take 25 microgram from each the control sample as well as a treated sample we'll make a pool and then we will use psi 2 which is our internal standard this will make sure that issues between different uh, samples are minimized by the use of uh, uh, so any variation is minimized by the use of internal standard. So we'll have three samples, one control, one treated and another sample is a pool of the two labeled with Psi2. Then what we do is, so we pool all those three samples. So these uh, Psi dyes, they are light sensitive. So we have a pooled sample already prepared. So this is our pooled sample. We have put aluminum foil and it has all three samples so then the, uh, the rest of the steps are exactly same as what we do in 2D we'll first rehydrate the strip using our sample but the only thing is that we have to maintain dark conditions because these samples are light sensitive we'll carry out rehydration we'll carry out isoelectric focusing SDS page but then later we do uh, but then later we do not have any staining or de-staining procedure these side eyes are fluorescent labeled and then we can analyze using the decider software. So I'll take the sample. And then I'll also put a cloth so that it remains in dark conditions and no light falls on this. So the rest of the steps, SDS page, equilibration and separation in 2D are same. Then we come to scanning of a 2D dye gel. So this is a representative image of a dye gel. You can see there are multiple spots and definitely the uh, side dyes are more sensitive than Kumasi stain. So as compared to our 2D gel, more number of spots here. So what we do usually, we scan the gel at three different wavelengths. So you can see at in this particular image, the gel has been scanned only at Psi 2. In the next image, it has been scanned at Psi 3. The next at only Psi 5. So you may find some spots which are there only in the image which is scanned at Psi 3 wavelength. So it means there are these proteins are only present in your control samples or you may see some spots are brighter in one of the gels maybe a sci fi uh, scanned uh, gel image so that means that particular uh, spot maybe that proteins abundance values are more in treated sample or another sample so this is how the 2d dyes principle works and uh, it's a very important gel based proteomics approach and has definitely more advantages than the regular 2D approach but 2D approach again a lot of people use it for other purposes so both the techniques they have their own merits and demerits but they are very important gel based proteomic approaches. So we have learned various techniques for performing gel based proteomics. Now let's move on to chromatography based lab demonstration. You will see how a specific proteins can be purified using chromatography. So let us start the laboratory demonstration session for chromatography now. Hello, so today we are going to discuss about protein purification. Protein purification is generally used for to isolate a single protein or a few proteins from a complex mixture of proteins. And we are exploiting different properties of the protein such as the hydrophobicity of the protein, 
the affinity of the proteins. Like here, you can see the one column that is super dex 200 column, which is used for the the gel filtration chromatography. So here we can separate the protein on the basis of their sizes. So the higher proteins which having a higher molecular weight, so they will elute fast, and the proteins which having a smaller molecular weight, so they elute uh, slowly. Once we put the sample, so the small protein will pass into the pore of the beads and they experience more resistance, more friction, so that's why they move very slowly. So here we can separate the protein on the basis of their molecular sizes. This is another column. Where the resins are there and the nickel entity is there, here we are using the properties, the affinity properties of the protein. So like the proteins which having a his tag, so the his tag can bind to the nickel NTA column. So the interested protein which having a his tag, they can bind to the column and other proteins will come out. Then we put a solution like imidazole solution which can compete with his proteins and can bind to the nickel NTA column. So in this way, the our interested protein will come out and the imidazole will bind out. So this is FPLC system fast protein liquid chromatography where we can use different different chromatography technique and then we can separate the protein by using this system here you can see there are some basic components of like FPLC system there are two pumps so this is a pump A and this is the pump B so each pump having a different buffer so once we pass the buffer the buffer will come from here and then will go here and these are the mixture of the buffer where the buffer will mix so here is the injection valve so here we can put our sample, this is like you see having a very small amount of samples, we can take the sample and we can put here injector wall. Once we put the sample here and these are the loop. So the capacity of this loop is 500 microliter. Now if having a more volume of sample, we can use 10 ml or 20 ml of loop. The sample will pass, come from the injector wall and it will go through the this column, this is a fatty column and now this is a flow cell which can measure the conductivity pH of the sample okay. so and the UV detector so when the sample will pass so we can measure the UV the exact protein is coming or not coming we can measure the pH now we are changing the buffer the pH of the buffer is changing or not and the conductivity if we are using a different amount of salt so from here the one sample will pass through and then it will go to the fraction collector so this is the tube which is coming from the hair flow cell and it will go to the fraction collector at 280, we have to collect this sample, so it will collect the sample in the tube. So this FPLC system, we can control by using Unicorn software. So once we click on the software, then it will open the system control, method editor, and the Unicorn manager. In the evaluation, also. so like once you run your sample, and then you have to evaluate your protein, so you can evaluate here. So here I am just going to like system control, how you can control the FPLC system. So here you can go in manual, you can set the flow rate. So once you put here 5 flow rate, 5 ml per minute, just insert and then execute. So here you can see the changes 5 ml per minute. Now it has been started. Now we are using two buffer, buffer A and buffer B. So now if we have to increase the salt concentration, then we have to increase the gradient. So go in manual, click on pump, then here you can see the gradient. So if you want to achieve the gradient 80%, we click 80% gradient. So the 80% gradient, the time, the head repeat. So if we want to achieve 80% gradient in 5 minutes. So we will click here 5 minutes and then just insert and then execute. Now here, once you set up the, the parameters, the protein is eluting. The, so it is measuring 280, the absorbance at 280 of protein. So here you can the peak is going out, means at this stage the protein is coming out of the column. So once you run the sample and your protein will come out, so here like you will get this type of peak. So at 280 it will absorb and then it will give the intensity. So here you can see this is protein where uh, your protein is eluting out and here like at what fraction so you can elute those fraction and then can store and this will be your purified protein thank you
I hope in today's lab demonstration sessions on dye and chromatography you got a better understanding of how theoretical concepts which we have been discussing how in the laboratory settings they could be used so i hope this lab demonstration session was useful for you and it will help you to read the uh, chapters read the papers with much more confidence thank you